What's going on, man? Oh, man, nothing. Chilling. Uh, another week down. Just trying to exit this 2020. Damn, they, they come keep going. Enough. <laughs> Just keep going. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I kind of want to start off, not, I ain't going to say on a sad note, but just updated news of, as far as, uh, you know, uh, Tiny Zeus Lester. Oh, uh, yeah. Zeus. Yeah. He, uh, he, Debo. Yeah, Debo. See, a lot of people probably don't even know the Zeus part, you know what I mean, from uh, No Holes Bar with Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Hey, that's how I got introduced <laughs> to him. That's the first time right. I saw him. Yeah, me too. Me too. So, um, you know, rest in peace to him. Uh, who else? Uh, Charlie was it? Charlie Park? Charlie Daniels? Charlie Daniels. Yeah. I don't think that's Parker Daniels, black country music uh superstar. You know what I'm talking about? I do not know what you're talking about. Oh, man, see this? I don't. I don't do country people, so y'all gonna have to forgive me. I'm looking it up right now, but uh. uh a big country legend, Charlie Pride, way off. <laughs> yeah, it's Char- Charlie Daniels, <laughs> way <Yeah>. off. <laughs> I knew yeah. the Charlie part, but I don't know country music. So, like, first of all, I've heard his name before. Then you know he was a black dude. So that's 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 kind oh, of black. No, I definitely didn't know that was. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, it's COVID things still going, still taking taking people out, and uh, as well as just twenty twenty as a whole. Yeah, yeah. Um, stay masked up, stay six feet away, distancing, and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. Keep uh, it's not for you, it's for other people. Oh man, it's for you too. But... Speaking of, so uh, I know we ain't really talk about this, but you you gonna get that uh. You gonna get that uh vaccine? Yeah. Me personally? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You. Uh nah, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Um I'm 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 good and thankful and blessed to not be, you know, uh, sick or have any symptoms with anything. I rarely get sick. I can not Um but no, I don't I don't plan on it. I, I rarely take the flu shot. Oh really? Yeah. See, I got I have to do the flu every year. Have to. That's not a choice. And I know right now I think this is optional. This uh COVID uh vaccine is, is optional to the military, but I know eventually it, it won't be. Um mm-hmm. and I, I don't really want it. I don't at all because like I just feel like there hasn't been a case study on it long enough yet for us to know what the long-term effects are going to be, which is the reason why I don't want to take it. I'm not knocking it. Like, eventually, everybody should get it and take it so we can eradicate this thing. But the, right. the case study just hadn't been long enough, in my viewpoint. Yet. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure, like you said, you don't have a choice. But um, like me, I would wait until I get some stuff. I mean, I saw something on the internet, either the internet or some news I can't remember which one it was. It was talking about um, uh, some of our, uh, side effects to this new vaccine. Like people mm-hmm. getting cerebral palsy or something like that. I was like, whoa, like, is this the same one that just came out that Pfizer is doing? Or is this the other one that they're doing? Yeah, no, I, I think they said it is the same one that Pfizer is doing, which makes it all the uh, crazier. Uh, and I know that their stock prices dropped uh, because they said something about, uh, I guess their warning level mm-hmm. uh, said um, that it could cause death or, you know, you could just have an allergic reaction from it, which is standard stuff. So I don't know why that would make their stock prices drop. But, you know, that, that's a little concerning in itself, too. You know, anytime stock market takes pause in something like everybody else need to pay attention to what what's happening because somebody has some inside information that's causing the numbers to do that type of stuff you and it's always insider stuff always yeah. yep so that's that's crazy uh just to kick off to the zombie apocalypse just how i see it like, <laughs> like i am legend when uh right when uh they they cured cancer but yet it turned everybody into the whatever they were they were zombies in some walking zombies yeah 
not a walking zombie, but a, like it's kind of like how uh, how Deadpool got got formed, like from the movie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like he just like burnt on the mutated. Like yeah, yeah. So, but uh, they say that the, the vaccine was uh, was developed by a black woman. Okay, I mean, that's I, what uh, that's what they say. Yeah, again, I haven't seen her personally come out and say anything, but uh, that's what the news. I don't say the news, but Doctor Fossey, Fossey. Yeah, that's what he's saying. I mean, all I, I hats off to whoever did create the vaccine. Yet again, I have nothing against the vaccine. It's just the case study is not long enough. You know, we don't know what the long term effects is, and we couldn't have because. COVID just happened a year ago. So, you know what I mean? Like, you can't tell me, oh, yeah, we know what the prolonged effects are. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because the disease itself just came out. So, like, or the virus itself. So, like, let's let's take pause for a minute. Like, I'm not one of these people that's, like, eager to hurry up and get back out to restaurants and stuff like that. I'm like, nah, man, we can wait. Yeah, um, we definitely can. So, uh, I just don't know. I, I don't know. I, I guess uh, if I do end up having to get it, I, I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure, like we, like a lot of people, has probably already had it. Just maybe either not had any symptoms or had really mild symptoms where it really didn't affect them as much. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty sure, probably back in January, February time, like a bunch of people at my job was sick, and uh, I got sick and I had this prolonged cough forever. Um, I'm pretty sure that's, that I probably had it around that time period. So I just never went and got the antibody test to see if I did have it. Right. Uh, Kismika Colbert is her name. Kismika Corbett. Mm. Yeah. Um, again, that's, what, that's, that's what's being reported on ABC News um, and then other local news outlets that, mm. that, that, that I see. Well, shout out to her. Oh, absolutely. Shout out to her, especially if it works. <laughs> like again, we don't know. Like that's, exactly. That's that's, that's that's my whole point. I hope I hope she ain't the scapegoat. Like, yeah, like mm -hmm. look what the, look what this black woman developed, and it's now, you know, mutating people and causing all these other yeah. side effects and stuff like that. So they I'm, can have somebody to blame. I'm more worried that they're using a black woman just so black people will take it. Because you know, we don't take, you know, we don't, uh -huh. we don't come out there and be like, you know, uh because, you know, in the past, we have been experimented on. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we don't just jump out there all willy-nilly. Like, sign me up first. No, nah, let's see let's see what's going to happen first. Exactly. There's a lot of Black people, they still don't go to the doctor today because they don't trust doctors, you know? That's right. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this goes, man. I'll just roll out. Just stay safe still, you know, kind of stay in your isolated uh, bubble as much as possible. No, um, don't go around new people. <laughs> you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. We've been around. Them. Don't go around them. You know what I'm saying. Uh, and just, just, just be as safe as you can, because uh, I know a bunch of y'all ain't gonna get this vaccine. So uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, bro. Well, I appreciate you bringing that one up, though, because I mean, that was, that was a good one. Yeah. The discussion topic. What about this Mando? I mean, we got one more episode left. Yeah, we do got one more episode, but the last episode was pretty good. Oh, yeah. But you know what I really didn't realize? How short they were. I was so ingrained to how, you know, about the action and the storyline. Mm -hmm. I really ain't been paying attention to how short these yeah. these series are. Nah, until you go look at the runtime, like you don't, because I don't feel it while I'm watching it. I don't feel like, oh, man, that was a short episode. Like, it feels right. like an hour until you look at the times. Like, that was just 36 minutes. Like, right. <laughs> they did a lot. And it should be pretty, exactly. Yeah. But it was a good one. Had Bill Burr in it again. Hey, I, I love Bill Burr, man. He's a great comedian. Oh, yeah. He did his thing with this one, too. Like, just messing with Mando, you know, uh -huh. uh, going the back and forth. Or just, it's, it's really one way because Mando really wouldn't give him a whole lot to, to, to work with. But, like, a lot of it, I can tell, like, Bill just took and ran with it. He just kind of uh, improvised yeah. here and there, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, Boba Fett got some new armor or touched up his armor. I was like, man, what is this? They said, was, yeah, they said it was clean, but it looked brand new. <laughs> it did. It was so <laughs> new. It looked like it fit better, too, because like yeah. last week when he put on his his daddy armor, like it was, he looked a little fat. This one, like, <laughs> he, 
he didn't look that bad. So yeah, it definitely fit him better, you know, to hide some of that stomach that he had. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was tripping off there. I was like, so we ain't, ain't nobody gonna talk about the fact that Boba Fett cleaned up his armor. Like, we ain't gonna talk, we ain't gonna mention that, huh? Right. Where the scratches at? <laughs> uh, of course, he took off. Uh, Mando took off his helmet this 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 episode. Which he did one time last season too. So yeah, but you didn't get to actually see his face. All right. I think eventually we're gonna get it to where he's constantly taking his helmet off, kind of oh, like yeah. Boba Fett, you know. Yeah. Or yeah, uh, Bo-Katana and and you know other Mandalorians out there that are not zealots. As I think they kind of called him. Uh, and they call him a zealot for the way that he he interprets the Mandalorian code. So, right. um, but no fault to him. That's just how he grew up. He ain't know he ain't know no different, you know. So now that he's been exposed, I think down the road we'll start to see him take it off a little bit more and start to realize, like, oh, I don't have to keep this thing going. Another thing that was pretty funny in the episode was the uh, Star Troopers, the classic non aiming. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the weapons, faulty weapons and stuff. Man, it's, it was, yeah, that is a running joke. That's yeah. so funny. But then even, they, even they him, he talk. picked up his and was like shaking it. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, this thing broke. Uh, what was I going to say also? Uh, oh, they'd be, they be, how they be talking to each other too. That'd be pretty funny. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've been watching the uh, Clone Wars since we've seen uh, uh, Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been watching the anime, and the way the droids talk to each other is hilarious. Like, because they just, I don't know, it's, it's, like, it's supposed to be comic relief. So it's funny, you know, just to kind of hear them talk to each other. And I, I didn't pick up on that watching the prequels. But I know it was in there because I do remember uh -huh. hearing that voice, you know what I mean? But like I just didn't pick up, or they maybe they just didn't have as much dialogue as they do in the Clone Wars. So but yeah, that's a lot. Clone Wars is a lot. It's it is. episodes. Yeah, I mean I haven't watched it. I can tell you that I haven't watched it. So I'll be I'll be I catch up on YouTube and get the snippet stuff. Yeah. That's that's where I get my my daily, I don't want to say daily. My uh, information, I guess you could say, people who do a lot of reviews. Yeah, no, nah, I mean it's good, it's good, and it's action packed. It's a lot more action than I thought it was going to be, but it's it's just so many episodes that it's just like I just, I think I got one more episode to finish the first season, and like I'm tired already. It's like, you know <laughs> what I mean, like 23 episodes is a bit much to be trying to binge, even if they're 30 minutes. Like it's just a lot, um, but. It's it's good. And uh, speaking to uh, Ahsoka, you know, Disney announced that she's going to have her own spinoff with Rosario oh, Dawson. Well, Disney released a whole bunch of stuff that they were oh, yeah. going to mm -hmm. release. Yeah, most definitely. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, like you said, that her, she got one. And um, they said they're going to do some more, like uh, Obi Wan Kenobi got one yeah, coming Obi on. Yeah, Obi got one. Yeah, it's going to be a Rangers of. The Republic, I think, which I think is supposed to be Gina Carano's. Uh, I can't think of her character's name, uh, but she runs with Mando, uh, the, the, the new sheriff or whatever she is, Marshall. Uh -huh. uh, Carla Doom, I think is her name. But I think that's supposed to be her spinoff, but I just read something. Uh, so a while ago, I don't know if you know this, but Gina Carano in real life tweeted, uh, she, she, she's a little conservative. So she tweeted some comments about uh, Democrats wearing masks around their eyes. Uh, it was like Democrats now want us to wear a mask around our eyes so we can't <laughs> see the truth. I thought it was I mean, funny, but apparently it got a whole lot of backlash and people are calls, calling for her to be removed from Disney and oh, removed really? from the Mandalorian. Yeah. So oh, come on, man. Uh, it's going too far. Last thing I saw was that Disney has asked her to apologize. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't either. I mean, but if they threatening her job and right. she's getting paid, like, I hope it's money. not that. I hope it's not like that, really. Because, like, I, I don't think her comment was bad. And, like, at what point are we just taking away from free speech? Like, there was exactly. nothing hateful in that. You know what I mean? Like, it was a joke. Right. It's a meme. It was even legit if it, a even meme. If it, 
even if it wasn't a joke and she really meant it, it's still okay. Yeah. Because like you said, that's her free, that's her free yeah. speech. There's she no said on her on her personal, you know what I'm saying, account didn't have anything to do with her job mm-hmm. or nothing. I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure if if I was into Twitter, uh I'm pretty sure people were probably calling for uh Disney Star Wars to pull Bill Burr too, because Bill Burr say some stuff. You know what I mean? Like he's always saying something crazy. If anybody to pull, yeah. <laughs> kill him off. Yeah. They tried to come for uh Rosario Dawson too. Cause apparently what? she got in some she, there's a legal allegation out about her uh I guess uh being mean or something to a trans member. Uh but come to find out it's a person from her family. Man, what's going on with your background, man? You, like you glitching over there. I just I see that. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Since as soon as you say something, I mean, I don't know what that is. But uh, right. yeah, apparently some 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 friend of the family that she knew uh, made allegations saying that she was being that that Rosario was being mean to them in some some form or fashion along with her family, uh, Rosario's family that is. So, but from what I read up, because I was trying, I was like, man, what is everybody going crazy over? And from what I read up is that the case, most of the, the the charges have been dismissed in the case, and the lawyer of the trans member has quit because it's just it doesn't seem like there's any validity to the allegations. So uh, Rosario will definitely probably get off from that. And you know, from what I can tell, and I don't know her personally, never met her, you know, but she seems like a very inclusive person, you yeah. know, in the roles that she take and the and in some of the um, Activism, active, activist, activism. Yes, thank you. Uh, that she does. Uh, so, I, I can't see her doing something malicious towards uh, somebody else in that way. You know what I mean? So, everybody just—I don't, I don't know what it is. With this world, man. Everybody complaining about something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, people just like they be heard. That's all it is, really. So they got the Obi Wan Kenobi, which are, you know, like I said, you um, heard Hayden Christensen might be coming back. Oh no, they say like, he's he is. He's coming back to play yeah, Darth Vader. Yep. I can I can I'm, I can't wait for that. Yeah. He was a he was a mean Darth Vader. Yeah, I don't know if he's gonna be in a suit or if they're gonna do flashbacks as Anakin. Either way, I'm here. I'm I'm forward. You know what I mean? Of course, he's not gonna do the voice. We know this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because Darth Vader voice is Darth Vader voice. You can't change it up now. Um, but like, nah, I like the dude, man. He's a good actor. He just got a bad rap off those first three. Really, the the, the second one is really the, the bad one. But it wasn't his fault, though. It was the writers. I mean, it was know, the material he was given. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> like, especially after you see some of his other stuff, like in Taken or uh, Jumper or uh, what's a, it's another one, Awake. Like, he does good work. So, yeah. you know, I hate that that kind of messed up his career, kind of derailed him to, to the, the yeah, stardom yeah. that he should have had. And that's oh, a yeah, Star Wars absolutely. curse anyway. Like, it seems like there's only, anytime you, you give a trilogy, there's only like one actor that kind of breaks out. The first one was Harrison Ford. The second one was uh, Ewan McGregor. I mean, Liam Neeson broke out too, but he was only in the first one. Uh, yeah, he was already a, a good actor before yeah. him anyway. He was already dark man, so. <laughs> And then uh, you got in this last one, you know, time to tell, you know, is it, well, you, already you can't count Oscar Isaac because Oscar Isaac was established. Uh, but John Boyega or uh, uh, John, yeah. or Daisy Ridley, you know, hopefully all of them blow, you know, oh, hopefully absolutely. all yeah. of them blow. But I think John was already, well, I won't say already, but he's been broke. He's breaking out too. He's been doing, you know, films back home from his yeah, home right, country. Yeah. I mean, he had attacked the block at the time that yeah. he got cast. That was that was his big movie, you know. But I'm sure he was in other stuff too. Yeah, and Daisy, I, she seemed like she came out of nowhere, but I'm sure she was probably in stuff too. I just ain't aware of it. Um, but since then, the only thing I've seen her in is that Orient Orient Express, Murder on the Orient Express. I haven't seen that. That's good, man. It's a murder mystery. Check it out. Got it. But then also, I mean, even sticking with Marvel, I mean, uh, Disney, they got it. 
a whole bunch of stuff that they dropped on the Marvel side of Disney. Oh yeah, um, with the upcoming, you know, uh, Fantastic Four. Yep, that was big. To say yeah. that we are actively in development of Fantastic Four, and, and and all you got was the number four, and everybody's already, you yeah. know, what I'm saying anticipating. <laughs> oh, I mean, I just want John Krasinski and Emily Blunt as the two stars. You know, that, man, you got to give the fans what they want. Mm-hmm. And give me like Zach Efron as as Human Torch. You know, just Zach Efron would be a good. He would yeah. be a good one. Yeah, yeah. He, he definitely would. <laughs> Oh, uh, but then they also, you know what I'm saying, you got the, uh, the, the, the talks about uh, Captain Marvel 2, yeah. the inclusion of uh, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel, and also, um, ah, I forgot her name, the black woman. Yeah, uh, Rambo. Uh, Rambo, yeah, Monica Rambo. Yeah. Yep. Which well, she's also going to be in uh, WandaVision. So that'll be the next time we see hers yeah. next month. Yeah. Um, which they showed the trailer for WandaVision. It looks crazy. Uh, I have no idea what's going on in a good way. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be really good. <laughs> they showed the low key trailer, which looked like it's going to be pretty. It's kinda, uh, I mean, it's good. It looks like it's going to be good, but it's kind of like where are they going with it? Yeah, I don't. I don't have any idea. But <laughs> I think I think the good thing about the Loki trailer is that Loki will be like he's kind of an else world type situation because he's on a he's from a separate timeline you know not really existing in time and space so his is going to be crazy they can just do whatever they want to and not have any consequences to the greater mcu uh storyline um even look like black widow might have been in his like the support it looked like like he was on dormir or whatever that Vormir. yeah Vormir. yeah there you go but Uh, then also um uh, Owen Wilson, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty uh, yeah, by his yeah, party. Yeah, yeah. Like, nah. He's all you know, he's a comedian. I think yeah. he's gonna bring some comedic stuff to that. Yeah, that will be good. Um, yeah, Haw- Hawkeye shooting now. They didn't mention that, but it's it's in production right now. Uh, Hawkeye, yeah, yeah. They yeah. showed a clip of that too. I think. Did they? I thought I thought I saw a small little clip uh, of the production, like production stuff, not actual okay. footage or stuff. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, you got uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah, that I think like they, gonna be they, good. they put that release date out in what March? I think they said. Uh, it's good to get all this stuff. They, you know, it's coming, but it's not coming fast enough. Nah, it's not. It's not. You know what I was mad about though? They didn't show Eternals. Um, because nope. that's that's done. That was supposed to come out already. So I know you're done with that. So show me a trailer. I've yet yeah. to see an Eternals trailer. Uh, Legend of uh. Shang Chi or sh- whatever that is that that uh Shang Chi something like that in the ten ring Shang Chi yeah Shang Chi Shang Chi show me a trailer of that y'all rap y'all you could have put something together you know? that might be in post you know pre production post production no nah, they they just went back I don't think they done are they no nah, they done they done I thought Man, they, they had w- just went back to work in uh this summer Mm-mm, they rapped. So if they went if they went back, the only thing they're going back for is for pickups. But you have enough material to where you could have put out a trailer. You know what I mean? Uh, but nah, man. I mean, I'm glad Marvel finally gave us something. You know what I mean? Because it's been right, so they got to give the investors something. They, they gave us nothing on Blade. Like we got nothing on Blade. They yeah. just gave us the logo. Like all right, man, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, man. Like I, I just been. I heard they recast Cassie Lane for Ant Man. It's the girl that showed up at the end, didn't it? I mean, they, uh, in game, they said they recasting her. Uh, For what reason? I don't know. I thought it was the older girl. I know she's older now because time went. Yeah, so, right. I like that little girl too. I thought she was good in that role. Um, I mean, I don't care. I mean, it's not because the girl that was in in game, she was in there for a hot second. And I don't yeah. know who she is. So, no, not at all. But uh, yeah, but you know what I'm saying. But uh, Ant Man and uh, the Wasp. I think that the uh, the villain they announced was going to be uh, Kane the Conqueror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't think of the gentleman's name, but the guy from Lovecraft Country. Uh, he's 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 pretty dope as an actor. So don't know what that is. Lovecraft Country? No, I'm saying I, I didn't watch it. I know what it is. I just didn't watch it. I'm just I don't have. It. 
I don't have HBO. I need you need to, to. I need to get it. I'm like, oh, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm, I'm going to catch up on it. Um, and then they announced also that uh, they will not recast uh, uh, T'Challa. Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. Chadwick yeah. Boseman would be the last live action T'Challa, at least for the foreseeable future, which I think is the right choice. I saw somebody, uh, another like news scooper, blogger type person saying that he thinks it's the wrong decision. They should have recast him. And I think that's not, nah. nah, man. Because for uh, most people to look, you know, the movies is what they get. You know, comic books are not as prevalent as they used to be. You know, it's not a lot of cartoons, Marvel cartoons going on. So like to look up at the screen and see Chadwick Boseman, Boseman as Black Panther, that's what it is. For my son, that's what it is. He's Black Panther. So to recast that, one, cause confusion, two, takes away from, to me, takes away from his legacy because he gave us something that we hadn't had before, which is like a very positive Black superhero. And I said it that way because we've had Blade in the past, um, especially on that scale, you know what I mean? Because Blade was probably the only other Black superhero that we've had on that scale. He was an anti-hero. Right, he's an anti-hero. Spawn was an Mm -hmm. anti-hero. Meteor Man didn't make enough money to be considered on the same level, you know what I mean? So... Like uh, man, like man <laughs> on TV, <laughs> a couple of skits. So he definitely didn't make enough money. Um, or did Black Man have his own movie? Yeah, he had his own movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. Yep, yep. I'm thinking of Handyman. <laughs> Handyman. Yeah, you think. <laughs> Good old but, living color. But uh. Nah, man, like Chadwick was it. And I think personally, and something that stuck out to me, and I don't know if I'm just reading any stuff, because I already have a conspiracy theory that uh, Killmonger's going to come back, because you can't waste uh, Michael B. Jordan. And you can't let him go on somewhere else, because like, if you let him die in Black Panther 1, right, it's easy. that's it. That's it for him. He's going to D.C., and they're gonna cast him with something because like he he has the physique of a superhero, so you can't just let him go. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to bring him back. I already had that conspiracy theory and something Kevin Feige said. I mean, well, Marvel had him twice already. Give him the, get, let him go. No, nah, Fox had him one time and now and then Marvel had him. Still under the Marvel umbrella-ish. Mm-hmm. Man, you can't count them fantastic for as Marvel properties. <laughs> uh but Kevin Feige said everybody from the first was coming back. That's what he said. Everybody from the first was coming back. So he didn't exclude anybody. So I feel like maybe a flashback or something. Nah. I mean, one we I mean, we know Chad was not coming back. You know, I mean, like they're gonna have to write him out in some type of way. Like they which uh I did hear somebody say, you know, give him cancer, let him pass from cancer. And I was like, you know what, that's not a bad idea to let him go out the same way Chadwick went out, you know, suddenly <clears throat> devastate the MCU and everything. So it's kind of poignant. But I think in the story of Black Panther, they'll probably have somebody come, you know, King is dead. There's disarray because they're fighting amongst the, 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 the tribes or whatever. Uh, somebody comes in and tries to take over the whole country of Wakanda, maybe Namor. Um, and then from there, how do we get out of this mess, right? Who's the, who's who's our king? Is it uh, Mbaku? Is it Shuri? Nah, you know what? Killmonger actually beat T'Challa without the heart-shaped herb. You know what I mean? So he's really the last rightful heir or the, the last rightful king of Wakanda. Chadwick never won that back, or T'Challa never won that back. Not, not, not for real. He no. lost. He lost that back. And then he came back, he had the herb in the system. So, like, clearly that wasn't a fair fight, even though both of them had the herb in the system, but no one's supposed to by rules of tradition. So, in my viewpoint, right, Eric Killmonger is still the king of Wakanda. So let's bring him back. Let's give him some perspective on life so he can become a good anti-hero. You know, he's going to make some questionable decisions, but keep the court around him to kind of, keep him in check a little bit for the first couple of years. And then like, he'll probably finally start to understand where to go from there. But like, yeah, no, nah, I, I really think they're going to bring him back. I mean, it's a good 
theory. I said that. That's a good theory. And he comes back in the comic book. So um, his, his mom brings him back, but I think... Well, his think mom was, is dead in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it was pointless to give him a girlfriend in the first movie to just get killed by uh, Claw. They, did, they didn't say that she was his girlfriend. Or not, that he killed. But, but come on, man. It was his yeah, man, she was a pawn in a bigger grand scheme of things. He was just trying Which to get is, back to Wakanda. No, I got that. But that's the whole point is the fact that you had this person for no reason. Like, she, like you didn't have to even have her in the movie. Like, everything that she, she didn't set up anything. You know what I mean? She, like, she gave the woman her drink. What? I mean, it was it was foreshadowed, I would say. She was working in the kitchen. You could have did that with anybody. You could have had somebody from Claw's crew do that. You didn't have to have somebody attached to Killmonger. What I'm saying is, you put this person in this film, and then Killmonger took the shot, right? He's a marksman, so he if he shot her for real, he would know where to shoot her to where she could live. So it's possible. I'm just saying it's possible that she is still alive because we didn't see a body. She's still alive and she brings back Killmonger or some, or maybe she 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 could bring back Killmonger. Um, or the Wakandans just do. But again, he died with the heart-shaped herb in his system, no different than, Ch- than T'Challa getting thrown off a cliff and freezing to death. You know what I mean? Like clearly you're not beyond the realms of, of resurrection when you got the heart-shaped herb in your system. Mm. Yeah, I see where you're going. But he got stabbed with vibranium, though. He did. I mean, he got stabbed. But then also, at the end, if you look at T'Challa leaning over his body, like he's putting either pressure on the wound or he's putting one of those little balls on the wound. Like he's doing something to his body. He didn't just leave him there. Like he's rendering some type of aid. So it seems. So it looks. Who knows? I don't know if they meant to do that or maybe it was just like... You saw all that from that perspective. You saw the camera was zooming away look, from that. Look back at it. Because, like, I didn't see it watching the movie. I was watching somebody else's video, and they slowed it up. And I was like, sure is. He is leaning over the body. Like, why is he? Like, is he saying a prayer? Like, I don't know what he's doing, but I'm not. I don't know what he's doing, but I don't know what he's not doing either. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's all I'm going to say. Hopefully they bring back. Because I, I, and that's another thing. To me, I think we've had a African king, even though I know Chadwick Boseman is not African, but he, I think he did a good job representing Africa, right? As T'Challa, as the king of Wakanda. Now we get an American version in Eric Kimmonger, played by Michael B. Jordan, and let him have the reign because America is the, like, we are the ones that. Are more invested in these films, like going to spend our money and, and things of that nature. So it would be better for us to have representation of us up there. Um, not better, but you know what I mean? Like it, it makes more sense financially to have us up there as well within it, the African culture. It didn't matter to me. No, I mean, it don't matter to me neither, but I'm saying from a financial standpoint, it makes more sense to have an American, like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it, it, to me, it makes more sense to carry on the legacy with an actual American in there, in Wakanda. And it's like that whole lost, lost tribe going back home type thing. You know, we're doing that all over again. Yeah, you went, uh, you went, you went straight comic, comic booky, nerdy, slash um whatever you want to call it on me with all that, that <laughs> conspiracy theory discussion right there uh, open your third eye brother <laughs> no, <whatever. laughs> <laughs> but now i'm looking uh, forward to whatever they do with it so right. i'm looking forward for everything they got coming up which uh sherry uh what's the name the teacher right i think is her name but mm-hmm. I think that's her name. Anyway, the, the, the woman that plays Sherry, she's in hot water because she came out and was like dogging the vaccine, you know. So now people are calling, ah, you need to recast Sherry. And, you know, she, come on, man, for real. I mean, if she don't want to yeah. take the vaccine. Come on. It's her prerogative. Right. 
people are crazy. Yeah. Now she got to get tested before she go on that set. Oh, absolutely. But not to, you know what I'm saying? Now she don't have to have that vaccine. Yeah. I mean, she she's a black woman that don't trust the vaccine. Newsflash, people, we all don't. <laughs> like, none of us trust it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care who you tell me made it. I don't trust it until I can see a longer case study, until I can start seeing how people live years from now. You know what I mean? How's your kids live? You know what I mean? Like, the ones that get uh, um, injected first, let's say they're at the age of 20, they get injected, and they have kids. What's the case study on your kids? Do they have any of um, birth defects or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's a whole so process. You're you going to you, you be 90 years old waiting to take this vaccine. No, because I'm in the military, so I'm going to take it as soon as they <laughs> tell me to. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, it's not as easy as, oh, we developed a cure. So don't get mad at people for not wanting to take it because oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you haven't absolutely. done anything. No one knows what the science is behind I, it. I, I, yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. So I'm off it. You off it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, off it. I'm off it. All right. What, what about Spider Man then? With all of the news about bringing back uh, I don't know past Spider Man. Yeah. I don't know what's uh, true and what's not true. Doc Ock. Electro. Electro. Uh, Foster's Electro. Yeah. Uh, again, like I don't know what's true, what's not true. I've heard uh, Charlie Cox might be in the movie as Daredevil, which you know I would love because I, I love him as Daredevil. But who knows? Like until they officially say who's in this thing, like I'm not getting my hopes up. I'm not getting upset about nothing. Like I'm just, it is what it is. They're making a Spider-Man three movie that's going to be part of the Spider Verse slash Multiverse. It's probably gonna be like the biggest Spider-Man movie ever. Oh yeah, probably. And then they got the the TV shows like Miss Marvel coming out, she hulk coming out. Um, they said that the uh, Doctor Strange too was gonna tie into Spider-Man yeah. and Black Widow. I mean, not Black Widow, but um, WandaVision. WandaVision. Yeah. Like he he gonna be all over the place. Yeah. So I'm I'm really can't wait for that actual movie. Yeah. You know? Doctor Strange, which should have already came out by now, you gave me Doctor Strange when back in 2017, 18. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, probably. Yep. So they, 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 they take too long to make movies. That's the problem. I mean, and they had to, uh, I didn't think about that, dude. So you're, you're running Doctor Strange into Spider Man because Doctor Strange is going to come out first. However, I think Doctor Strange comes out first. Um, either way, uh, the director of Doctor Strange now is Sam Ridley, who did the first three Spider Man. Mm -hmm. So the chances of uh, Tobey Maguire coming back is high. You know what I mean? Because he's gonna be like, "Oh yeah, I just tied my guy back into this." Um, yeah, I, I forgot that he he was gonna be the director because uh, Scott Derrickson stepped away for creative differences because he wanted to make a scarier movie in Doctor Strange. And, you know, so I, I, I would agree with. You. I would too, but Marvel only wants to go so far right now. They did announce a ton of stuff on Hulu to um, Disney as a company, so it seems like that's where they're going to put their R-rated material uh, once they start developing it. So hopefully when Deadpool 3 comes out, uh, it will be R-rated and like for streaming purposes, it'll go to Hulu. So the <laughs> On IMDP, they got they do have like all of the original Spider-Man cast, like Zendaya, Tom Holland, this Tomei. But then they also got Benedict Cumberbatch, of course, Doctor Strange, they got mm -hmm. Electro, they got Doc Ock, and then they got uh that's it. Like they got Electro and Doc and Doc Ock, but they don't have any any um like Tobey Maguire, like or yeah, Andrew like Tobey or Andrew Garfield. Yep, yeah, no, none of that. Yeah, I mean, you got to wait too. I mean, Marvel's gonna try to have oh, a yeah, surprise absolutely. or two, you know. Yeah, it's like uh, just like Mandalorian, they didn't officially have Rosario Dawson on IMDb until that episode came out, and then they let her picture go on that episode. You know what I mean? Like, that's part of the cast, so they were trying so to keep that. So as we are talking about these new episodes, some episodes, these new TV shows and movies that are coming out with Marvel, 
what are your take on the whole thing about WB, uh, HBO Max, you know what I'm saying, trying to okay. keep their the lid on releasing movies at the same time in theaters versus, you know, streaming services. So here, here's my take. Or first, let me back up to, to Disney before we just get off Disney. Because they did say that they were going to release an animated movie both on streaming and on in the theater on the same day. But it said right. on streaming with premier access, meaning you're going to charge me like you like, did with Milan. Exactly. Extra to watch that. We're past that now. <laughs> like HBO has said, we are now past, past that. You know what I mean? So for you to do that, your, your movie's going to fail. I'm just going to let you know. And it's not the property to do it with. Like, again, if you would do that with something like a Black Widow, a major Marvel movie, a major Star Wars movie, or a Toy Story, maybe, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, um, what's, what's the Frozen? Pixar. Yeah. If you do something with one of those, then like, yeah, we'll pay for it. But a new IP that nobody's even heard of that, you know, nah, man, you're not going to get a lot of extra money for that. I'd rather go to the theater and pay 30 on my phone. Or no. <laughs> I don't think it's a good business move on their part. No, right, I, but what WB, uh, HBO Max is doing is they have said that their whole 2021 slate is going straight to uh, streaming services stream, at yeah. no additional calls and in the theater on the same day. Now, here's the problem. They didn't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> be the boss move they just they just was like this is what we're gonna do and you you know whatever uh now the problem with that is that a lot of people have back-end deals uh so pretty much they have their accountant if the movie makes it money it's money back right everything after that gets divvied up amongst people you know not everybody that was a part of the movie but just certain people that are like producers and things of that nature um so uh, what you've done is you've taken away their yeah. back end deals. Yeah, yeah. because you're, if you're going to release it on streaming and in the theater at the same time, you're not going to make your money back. Not, 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 not as much. Not in the theater. You're just yeah. not. So, what they did for like Wonder Woman, they took Wonder Woman and they said, all right, we're going to say Wonder Woman's going to make a billion dollars. Right. So, Let's say it took it, it was five hundred million to make Wonder Woman. So we're gonna say we got our five hundred million back, and then we're gonna take the this extra five hundred million. We're gonna divvy it up. So that's what they did. So Wonder mm-hmm. Woman was cool with that. They was like, all right, cool. You know, uh, Gal Gadot gets her money. Patty Jenkins gets her money. Uh, Zack Snyder, because he's still a producer on, on Wonder Woman, he gets money. Like everybody gets their money. What they did for the rest of this stuff was like, nope, we ain't make such deals. Like we're just gonna put your stuff out. So now they're backtracking and being like, all right, maybe we should make the same deal that we did with Wonder Woman, which mm-hmm. you got. So they're having to recalibrate. But now you have all these directors coming out in outrage <clears throat> over the fact that they're losing money. And then right. like, you're the purists that they're trying to say it's the theater. I don't think it's the theater that they're so concerned with. It's their money. No, absolutely. It's, you know, it's absolutely their money. People are so greedy. It's not like they're not making money. They just don't. Right. They're not making the money that they want to make. Right. Exactly. Because they've already made them. directors absolutely. make their money up front. They're what you what you call above the line, which everybody yeah. that's above the line get their money up front. So it's greed, man. It's yeah. all about greed. No, it's it's, it's it's. I think it's a great move on Warner Brothers' part to to release to release it on stream you know what i mean like and everybody's like oh no we'll have the cure by then y'all keep talking about this cure but that's no guarantee that everybody's going to take it it's no guarantee that everybody's theater in their town survived so right. like we're in a whole different ball game it's a new norm so like streaming is the way of the future it's it's just it's inevitable we will always have theaters i do believe that but we will have a significantly less amount of theaters than yeah. we used to have this was, this, we talked about that on a previous podcast. Yeah. So, like, I don't understand this move. And then, like, Christopher Nolan, who is a very well-respected uh, director, 
uh, who has done a lot of business with Warner Brothers to include the Dark Knight trilogy, Tenet, mm -hmm. or I mean, I say Tenet, I'm gonna circle back to that, uh, but Inception, um, The Prestige, great stuff, man. And he comes out firing shots at Warner Brothers and I don't get it because, okay, if it's you a money situation. It. You nah, get it. Nah, because if it's a money situation, he just came out with Tenet and he was so intent on having Tenet be released in theaters. In theaters, yeah. You know how many people saw Tenet? <laughs> I ain't even seen it yet. <laughs> no, I haven't either. <laughs> and I love Christopher Nolan movies, but I was like, I'm not going to the theater to see Tenet right now. And like, then it's I also not a priority in my life. No, exactly. It's not. And plus, I wanted to go and support, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what's the guy's name? Some uh, Washington, Dizzy Washington Sun. Oh, David Washington. Yeah. David it's, Washington. Yeah. He's a lead, a leading black man in the movie. Mm -hmm. I want to go support. I do. Yep. But I just didn't. And I, I and I'm technical. I know what 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 Christopher Nolan did. I know how he shot the movie. He shot the movie on an IMAX camera. He he's done his last Dunkirk was like that. He's done most of his movies like that. So you're gonna shoot this movie, and then I'm gonna have to shrink it down to my television screen or my phone. Hey man, I'm sorry, but that's that's what I'm gonna do. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to the IMAX theater right now. Your movie lost money. How dare you come out and try to say this is not the right way to go? You're the prime example of why movies needs to go there. theaters right now. Right. You know what I mean, like, so the best thing is if you would have made a deal like Wonder Woman, where you say, hey, Tim is gonna make a billion dollars. Here's the rest of your money. You know what I mean? Like you should have did something like that. Because I, I guarantee you. Had Tenet came out on HBO Max, everybody would have seen Tenet by now. Yeah. A few times. And I've heard it's one of those movies where you got to watch it multiple times before you really understand what's happening. It's like Inception. Like, yeah, so you're going to tell me it's a movie that I have to watch multiple times and it's only at the theater? I'm not going to see that. Right. I'm not going to see that. And then another director came out, Dennis, I can't pronounce his last name, but he's a, a De Delanouve, I think, or something, something close to that. But anyway, he did Sicario. He did uh, Blade Runner. He's another amazing director. However, uh, there is no point in me going to the theater to see his film. And if we're being 100% honest, Late Runner did not do good at the movie theater. No, I didn't. Isn't it? It's an amazing movie. I love Late Runner. I think it was one of my favorite movies when everything, I was 18, 17, 18. It was great. It was awesome. I was blown away didn't do anything at the movie theater. So you're going to say that you're upset that Doom's not going to the movie theater, but like your movies don't really make money like that. So uh, and Dune is one of those, it's, it's, it has a reputation of being like super sci-fi, like over your head sci-fi. So mm -hmm. um, I don't think you were going to draw that much audience in the first place. But, and I'm, no, I'm one either. of those people. Because I'm like, I'm not going to see Dune in the theater, but you put Dune on HBO Max, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch Dune on HBO Max, because why not? Hey, same thing with this new Avatar that uh, James Cameron is, do, is putting together. Bro. It's, it's you, supposed to be I'm, the most biggest movie ever made. And then, unless you came out with pandemic. some new technology to go along with it, like you did the first time with 3D. I, I, dude, so, first of all, Sam Warrington, I now know, is not a good actor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to see no movie where he's the lead. So unless you <laughs> shifted the focus to somebody else, like I'm, I'm not that. I mean, it's, it's so far removed, dude. The first Avatar came out in 2009. I saw it in 2010 when I came back from uh from Kyrgyzstan. And I saw it in IMAX 3D, and it was the best 3D movie that I saw. That was 10 years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't. The, your franchise don't mean Matrix. Your franchise don't mean nothing to me no more. You know what I mean? I run into, I have people working for me right now that have never seen these movies and never heard of them because they weren't even around then. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's crazy. But like, this is the, and these are the movies that y'all are so hard pressed. <laughs> they need to be in the theater. No, hey, you need to get an audience first. This is the way. Like the Mandalorian, this is the way. <laughs> So I'm on I'm on board with Warner Brothers. I do think Warner Brothers was 100% or HBO Max. I believe they were 100% wrong in not telling everybody before they released their movies or before they released the announcement that they were going to put their movies on their streaming services. 
I think they were wrong for that. But other than that, they were absolutely correct. They yeah, just, good idea. They just they didn't roll it out right. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So hopefully that informs some of y'all on what's happening. <laughs> I know I just said a whole lot, but <laughs> oh yeah, I probably went over some people's heads. But just know if you are if you have HBO Max or anything that Warner Brothers is coming out with in 2021 you get for free, starting with Wonder Woman on Christmas. On oh, Christmas Day. So I think that's going to be definitely the movie that everybody's going to watch. It's, it's going to make money that night. I, I, 100%. This is the first big blockbuster movie going straight to stream. Yeah. This is a precedence. Uh, and then on the other end, Disney Plus is coming out with Soul, which I want to see Soul, but I think I want to see Wonder Woman more. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm not sure if we're gonna have to pay extra for soul. We bet not. <laughs> we bet <laughs> not. Like I love Jamie Foxx, but I'm not paying extra money to see a Pixar movie. This is not happening. So we, we we've been on movies and TV shows and stuff for a minute. Yeah. So let's just move over to yeah, yeah. this new um announcement that was made about uh Logan Paul and Mayweather. The great white hype. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. It's the great white hype. <laughs> that's, that's how you looking at us. The great white oh, hype. yeah, man. This is a great white hype, man. You my know brother. what? You're my brother. I'm going to tell, tell you right off the bat, man. <laughs> here's, here's a hot take. I want Logan Paul to not come here with it. Like, that's <laughs> what I want. I need that. I need that for the, for the sport of boxing. All right, because <laughs> I I'm, I've never been a Meriwether fan. Never. I just don't like his style. You know what I mean? I hate his point based boxing. I hate it. I think it destroyed the the, the art of boxing. Not the art of boxing, but it, I'm it, destroyed. I think it destroyed it. Yeah, he did a good job with the art of boxing. His whole defense. He, he, but it destroyed the sport of boxing because it's boring. It's very boring to watch. Well, I, I would agree with that. So I think to like we just had the Tyson fight, right? We just had uh it's been it's been a couple other fights here recently where there's been like some legit knockouts and some good hard hits and people are not doing this counter base pity pat boxing that uh, -huh. uh Floyd came up with. Uh plus Floyd fought everybody after their prime. I mean let's not let's not forget that guys like Sugar Shane Mosley after his prime. Uh Manny Pacquiao after his prime. Um, Oscar De La Hoya after his prime. The only person that he fought in their prime that I feel like still could have beat him was Zab Zuda. Because Zab had him on the ropes until they yeah. they, they got was, to fight in fight. the ring. <laughs> like once once they once the corner started fighting, like it threw Zab's whole game plan off. He he got all emotional and he lost sight of what, what was happening. Mm -hmm. Uh but uh other than that, man, like I just I, I'm not a Floyd Mayweather fan, so I think to kind of do away with his point based system, like if he gets knocked out by Logan Paul, like that, that I, th I think we'll be in a new era of boxing. That, and I'm not talking about like a white boy era. I'm just talking about like it will be back to the knockouts. I think everybody that's trying to do these exhibition fights is trying to go for the knockout. Mm. Do does this does he even have the power behind him to even knock him out? I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he doesn't I mean, have the speed. They where the can I take. He, they where the can take a punch. He can. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how how strong Paul is. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, the only fight I've ever seen him do is the Nate Robertson fight. And, I mean, no, only that's one a different. That's, that's to, a brother. Only only one of them knew how to box. Huh? It's two different people. Is it the other one he fighting? Yeah. Ah, so it's not Jake. It's no, it's not Jake. Logan. It's his older brother, it's Logan. Logan. Yeah. Oh, well, I hadn't seen anything of his, so who knows? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, I knew it was a Paul. I thought, I thought I just figured it was Jake Paul that was fighting. Uh, uh, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, I'm not going for him. I don't think it's going to be a knockout. It might be a knockout, but I just don't know who's gonna knock off who. I, mean, I think I think I think I think Floyd's gonna win. Don't get me wrong. I really think Floyd's gonna win. But I'm such a Floyd hater. Yes, I said hater. 
because I, I don't like the dude's style. Uh, I think that he's going to – I hope he loses. You know what I mean? But uh, – <laughs> I think he's going to. I, I think he's going to win. I just hope he's going to lose. <laughs> but I think the press junkie, if, if if Logan's little brother Jake, it's any indication of what the press is going to be like leading up to it. Like it's going to be a lot of reading jokes. <laughs> like, it's, just, <laughs> like it's going to be entertaining, just because like it seems like they like to troll people. So if you, they do. <laughs> I do, and I, it'll be good. To, hopefully, um, Snoop will come back for the commentating. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I think Mayweather is going to win. I think this is a a crazy fight. I don't even know how they got onto this this exhibition with these two people. But uh, Mayweather need to go sit down. It, it, some of the things that you know I thought about was some of the things that uh, Fifty Cent started saying about Mayweather and his spending habits. Like, mm-hmm. why would he do this? Like, what is his purpose of doing this? Yeah. It can't be. Is, is it is it for money? Is it because of his spending habits? Does he need money now? I don't know. I mean, he's oh. the highest paid boxer ever. So but, like, the thing hey, that he would need money, like that's crazy. It is. It is crazy to even think about how much money you have to blow mm-hmm. to even get to a point to even need money now. Right. But it, anything is possible. It's not for the love. I can tell you that right now. It's not for the love. I don't think it's ever been for the love for Mayweather. I no, think it's always been for money. He's a very disciplined. Narcissistic. Well, I wasn't gonna say all that. I was just gonna say he's disciplined in what he does. Cause like some people have to have the heart to box. Like Roy Jones, love him to death, but you saw when he lost the heart to box, but he kept getting back in that ring and he just mm-hmm. wasn't the same. Floyd, on the other hand, has a very he's he's always been calculated and disciplined in what he does. So he didn't need the heart to box. He don't really want to do it. He just sees it as a money making opportunity. If he could have thought of something else to do, he would probably do that. You know what I mean? So I think for that reason and that mindset that he can get back in there and do a good job. Unlike oh, some, some of the older I, boxers that get I'm going to say, yeah, he's, he's in great shape. He yeah. definitely can get in there and do it. There's nothing to stop him. Mm-hmm. If anything, he'll probably get in there and really try to hurt Logan to take out some of his frustration that he's been having here lately. Yeah, um, <laughs> out on him, like you know, what I'm saying stuff that's going on with his. You know, he's about to be a grandfather, right? I don't know. I don't keep up. No, I don't yeah. Know. No, I think so. I think that his daughter is pregnant. Um, so, if, if anything, like you said, it's going to be a <laughs> great white hype. Like Logan's going to tag him real good one time, and yeah. then he's going to be like, "You trying to embarrass me? Yeah, on, on this one, TV? TV? <laughs> <laughs> on TV." <laughs> and then they were just gonna lay into him. <laughs> probably. <laughs> That's probably what's gonna happen, man. I, I would like to see him get knocked out, though. Like, I, don't, I just, I've, I've never been a fan, man. Because <laughs> I, I, I feel like each, I feel like we were at a point where like each weight class was getting handed the baton to run with. You know what I mean? Like heavyweights had it first. You know what I mean? All the way up to Tyson, like, you know, and then Roy Jones comes along and the light heavyweight division just went on fire there for a while. You know what I mean? With Roy and Winky Wright and uh, uh, Mark Winky Wright. Uh, yeah. You know, so it was just on fire, man. I was like, man, this is it. And then bad, that dude. it went to middleweight with Floyd and like everybody just got bored. You know what I mean? And then UFC come out and they knocking folks out. So everybody just was like, oh, I'd rather watch that. Nah, I mean, it didn't get, it wasn't, it was before Floyd. I mean, while Floyd was still boxing, boxing wasn't born while he was, you know what I'm saying, doing it. I mean, you still had some good. I mean, you still had some fights. good ones, but like he outlasted all the rest of them. No, but that is true. And and then you had, based on how he was fighting, because I've seen documentaries where people would talk, like boxers, up and coming boxers or, or, or champs, uh, you know, some of the newer ones, they was like, yeah, I idolized Floyd Mayweather and his point base. You know what I mean? Like, so they, they saw his style after he went from pretty boy Floyd to money-making Floyd. Right. They saw his style and it was like, you know, I can emulate that, take less damage, have a longer career and get paid more. You know what I mean? Which I'm not, I mean, I, it sounds like I'm knocking it because I, I kind of am, but 
because it's less exciting. You know what I mean? Like I watch the sport of boxing for excitement. You know, you yeah. don't see, but, sit but there and watch man, people dance the whole time. But it's the same thing with, with, with football, though. You know what I'm saying? You watch football sometimes to see people getting, you know, get yeah. hit. Yeah. But it causes them personal injury. So mm-hmm. I, they, they changed the rules to make it more acceptable for people to, you know, longevity so they can have a life outside of box. I mean, uh, of the NFL. Right. So it's it's basically the same thing in boxing. Yeah, yeah, you you may not like it for the enjoyment of watching it, but right. it's better for them individually in a way. Yeah. It is. Mm. But I'd rather see it go the other you, way. I know. That's why you watch UFC. You know what I'm saying? You want to see Gladiator, you know what I'm saying, in the Roman Coliseum type stuff. Is that so bad? Saying? Is that so bad? <laughs> is that is that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> You want you know what I'm saying? Have somebody go like, no, kill yeah. him. <laughs> I ain't trying to have nobody die. Right, I know that, but I'm saying you, you want to see somebody get knocked out. Yeah, one hundred percent. To where they, you know, what I'm saying they go to sleep before they hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got, man? That was it on my list. That's it. Yeah, I think so. No. What you got? What you got, man? Oh, man, I got uh, some stuff that you probably ain't seen. I saw a movie on Netflix the other day called Peppermint. No, nah, I ain't watched that. I know all of it. Yeah. yeah, it was far-fetched. I mean, it was it was okay, but it was kind of far-fetched about how, you know what I'm saying, you get a woman who goes on a personal journey for five years and learning how to be a one man or a one woman, you know what I'm saying, uh, killing machine oh, yeah. takes down the whole Mexican cartel. She went the Bruce Wayne route. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but same, but for five years. Yeah. And then she going to get the one thing I don't like about in movies is that, and I'm not knocking women at all. I'm not. But for a woman to take a man's punch, I just it's not believable in movies to me. Yeah. It's like you're gonna take like three, four hits, and then you're gonna get back up. Like, and you didn't take three, four hits. I mean, I understand, you know, women empowerment and women and stuff like that, but some of this, I mean, it's not unrealistic, I say. Let me say that. It's unrealistic. Can't say that, man. You're going to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for listening to Brother Newsom Brother podcast. Newsom. This is our last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Mark just got us canceled. <laughs> but, that, I mean, this is unrealistic. For me. I mean, it was a good movie overall. It was just some parts that was unrealistic. That's all, I watched that's all I'm saying. I watched uh, Hands with Russell Crowe. Yes. No, I'm not, I haven't watched that yet. Yeah, Road Rage. I heard it was pretty good, though. Nah, it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. And she, look, I'm not giving nothing away, but she deserved it. <laughs> like, not for real. <laughs> off of rudeness, you know what I mean? Like, you just, just it was so, and that it was, it's even in Entitled. trailers. Yeah, no, it's in the trailers where he he apologized and was like, all right, your turn. And she was like, no, I'm not apologizing to you. And that's what spins everything out. Uh-huh. And it's like, nah, man, like you should just apologize. You were wrong. Like he, GP. Was, he was yeah. wrong and then you were wrong too. So, but you were having a bad day. He was having a bad day. He even tried to break it down for us. She didn't want to listen. I'm like, all right, that's what's up. I got you. <laughs> I'm sure you what a bad day is. <laughs> right. That's all it takes sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You just pushing him to the edge. I mean, he was already on the edge. You just yeah, pushed him over. Yep. Nah, it was hilarious. <laughs> I'm about to check that one out myself. Did you watch uh, SNL? Not 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 yesterday's, but last week's. I did. I don't, you'll have to remind me. I, it was just, I was, the only part that was good, don't funny to me, was um, Pete Davidson's skit. It was Eminem. He wrote a letter to Santa. Oh, yeah. The dear Stan. <laughs> that was good. And then it was, for them to have Eminem come in at the end, like that was yeah. good too. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I like Santa's reply. He was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Not dealing with this guy. <laughs> you know, you thought, at first, you thought he was going to freestyle or, or yeah. you know, the rap neck. We like, say, like, wrong address or something. <laughs> Say sorry, Stu. I don't know. Yeah, it was real pretty good. <laughs> That's all. I know that you um you into the new book of power. 
Power Book yeah. Two. Yeah, yeah. They had a. I haven't watched today's episode, so I'll do that when we get off here. But, but is, uh, is it is it as good as Power? Oh, wait, Book Two. Yeah. Oh, Book Two is it, it, it's, it's better. I haven't than, seen it at all. None of it. It's better than the later episodes of, of Power. Um, because Power started out strong, like first two yeah. three seasons was good, and then it just started getting dumb, dumber and dumber. Um, yep. This one's back good, man. Mary's doing her thing. She's good. The guy that plays Bobby Brown, I think of his real name, uh, but he'll forever be uh, Bobby, Bobby Brown. Brown. <laughs> uh, he's he's killing the game. Like he's he he's 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 a good actor. Um, they got a new Tommy, uh, somebody that's like ruthless, like no hard. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Tyree got a little dude he run with that you've seen before when he was in Cho, uh, but uh, he ain't heartless, you know what nah. I mean. But like he, 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 he's that white boy that can handle himself around black people, you know. But he, he ain't no, nah, he's no Tommy, Tommy. <laughs> no Tommy. <laughs> and then uh, he got a couple love interests. Uh, Tyree, he ain't um, doing no love scenes, is he? Nah, nah, not not really. Just a couple of interests, uh, but nothing has come to be. Uh, it's been good. Mm, they brought two big back this last episode. He the one that was yeah, with Spank. Know, yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, uh, from the last one. Yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about. I, that dude was hilarious to me, man. Like <laughs> him and Method Man had a had a scene because Method Man's a lawyer on the show. And they had a scene like a little back and forth, and like Method Man had to let this had to let the nigga out. You know, he's trying to be all professional, but too busy. It's like, nah, ain't no snitch. You know, uh-huh. Method Man like nigga, just <laughs> listen. <laughs> like, just... <laughs> ain't nobody trying to get you to snitch. Just do what I say. I can get you out of here. <laughs> so that was that was funny. They were back and forth, but. And then, of course, like his name is something completely different. So, like, people, like, they'll bring, like, hey, do you know this person? Like, whatever. And they're like, man, I don't know who that is. And like, he goes by street name 2 bit. Oh, yeah, I do know 2 bit. Like, it's just, <laughs> you know, Chauncey. I don't know, no Chauncey. No 2 bit. Oh, yeah, I know 2 bit. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> is, it's been good, though, man. It's, it's, a, it's a little different. Um, it's supposed to have a lot of spinoff too coming, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be like five total. That's what I thought. Like, what's what's what the hold up? I know COVID got everybody shook. You know what I'm saying? Post production stuff, but I thought all this stuff was had already been done. I think they're already shooting, or they they might have finished shooting already. The uh, um, Kane story, Kane story, Rise of Kanan, or something like that. So uh, that's going to be when they're they're all younger. Um, so you'll have a young ghost, a young time. Oh man, I don't want to see that um, prequel stuff. I I do for the if they touch on what happened between Kanan and Tasha, because like I feel like we've never got closure on why yeah. she hate that man so much. Which we I still know. say it's time. Yeah. you know. So um, what about this? I saw, I saw that uh, there's a Power Book Four called Force. Is that? It's uh eight episode. Is that Tommy's? Tommy's gonna have one. Thing? His own spinoff. He's gonna have one. I don't know what his is called, but yeah, I think that's what it is. I see that on um, IMDb. Mm. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to that one probably the most because Tommy's crazy. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. That dude bodies that role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's all I got now. Man. Word, word. That's my last thing. Let's wrap it up then. So yeah, I mean, hey, <laughs> I hope that you know what I'm saying we didn't get any, you know, saying comments on the last one. So I hope that, you know what I'm saying, people who are watching, you know, give us a little comment something in the chat below so we know, you know, give us some ideas of what to talk about. Uh and also subscribe to the to our channel, YouTube channel. You know, check out some of the other videos that we got going. Yeah. Yep, they're all not. I mean, some of them are funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got you got you got to listen to the whole thing, man. Because you're gonna take something away from it. You know, don't don't just pick and choose. Because when even though it might say something, you know, uh, that sounds a little too political or something, like it's gonna be funny. You know, something. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We we going this way. <laughs> oh yeah.
Yeah, yeah. Like Kevin Hart said, like if you watch his special where he's talking about the man's conversation, <laughs> like with text messages, oh, yeah. that's how we are. Like we just we go just all over the place. Like you know, we start on one line and then we, and then we'll have to come back. You know, like one of us have to bring each other back. So for sure. All right, brother. All right, man. Good as always. For sure. Peace. Yep.